Takumi's off to a strong start, which isn't all that surprising. FRs accelerate much faster than FFs can. It's amazing what a big difference the wheel alignment can make, huh? Well, so far, I guess it's what you'd expect. Am I right, Chief? I suppose so, yeah. The H6 sure as hell took off like a rocket from the starting line. But I'm betting Tomoyuki doesn't even have the pedal to the metal yet. Speed is only half the battle. It's not who has the lead right now, but how these two maneuver the next few corners that'll tell us how the race is gonna play out. You sure about that? Yeah, cool, I gotcha. You're gonna think I'm yanking your chain when I tell you this, boss. But it looks like Project D is gone with the 8-6. What the hell do you think they're up to? I mean, the FD would have been anyone's first choice for a course like this. Come on, are you that arrogant, Ryusuke? Or have you just lost your mind? I warned you about that guy. Beating him is not gonna be a walk in the park. I'll admit taking the lead so early on seems as good a way to start as any, but in a race like this, it can work against us. From the starting line to that first corner, the amount of information we've given our opponent about how the 8-6 will handle the rest of this course is huge. A shrewd racer can measure up a car's limits by watching it accelerate from a stopped position. Just step back and observe, and you'll see the 8-6 laid bare. There won't be much Takumi can do to compensate for it. The maximum power output of its engine will have been obvious. His opponent will be able to figure out how the output scales as it revs, even the gear ratio. What it boils down to is this. There's no way for us to beat a professional strategically. But if we aren't able to beat him strategically, how can we? Technique? Takami is good, but I'm afraid his technique won't hold up against the professionals either. And it's not as though the car has any special advantage in and of itself. As far as I can tell, our opponent's EK9 is flawless. In terms of sheer power, it equals the 8-6. Maybe even saying that much is being optimistic. I'm not sure I understand you. I mean, are you telling us that you accepted this challenge knowing that we were destined to lose? That's insane. <laughs> Don't jump to conclusions, Fumihiro. That isn't what I'm telling you. Huh? There is one thing. One thing our Fujiwara has that even a professional racer doesn't. Call it an X-Factor if you like. It's the reason I chose him over Keisuke. There's no such thing as a race we're destined to lose. You will always have a chance. Project D doesn't ever back down, no matter who our opponent is. We're fighting for our street cred here. Well, 
Well, generally speaking, this course can kind of be divided up into four main distinct sections. Right when you begin, the road is narrow and goes on like that for a little while. The best place to make a move is in the section just after that, where the road gets wider. Provided you've got the same skills that Tomoyuki has, with enough space you can pretty much attack from any angle you want. From the second section on, because the road is so much wider, you've got a lot more freedom when it comes to choosing your line. And because this race requires going to the end and coming back, it'll be interesting to see how much distance there is between them by the time they return to the first section of the course. <laughs> Coming up on where the road widens and visibility improves. You can tell they just finished construction on this part. It looks pretty, but the surface is crap. And the seams on the asphalt are rough enough that the car will jump around all over the place if I'm not careful. Good engine you've got there. But that suspension system's gotta be as old as you are. No way you're gonna be able to keep it floored like this much longer. Even on a road like this, you're able to keep that thing under control, aren't you? You're good. And that car is well-tuned for an 8.6. But you can't hide the fact you're struggling. I don't get it. What's the point in a race like this? I mean, heading this punk his ass is fun on principle and all. But what am I supposed to learn from this? Yeah, I know, I know. Whatever. They're on the second section now. I understand. Thanks. Welcome back. Where were you? Sulking in the FD, but since I look like an idiot, I decided to come out. Hmm. If you're ready to know why, I'll tell you. the high point corner. The next part is all steep downhill inclines. And now the question becomes how much longer I play along. Not too much longer. After all, I've got a little something called professional pride to think about. <laughs> basically just wasting time now. Hell, I knew before I started this there'd be nothing for me to gain by racing an amateur. Giving this guy a lesson in humility is gonna be so easy it's sad. Because once I get ahead of him, it's all over. Unless I try to sort this crap out in my own head first, I'm never gonna make any progress, I know that. So I just hung back in the FD for a little while. I needed to work out for myself what your reasons were for not choosing me. And I think I get it now. Knowing we were up against a real professional, I've been way too anxious about taking this guy on. I convinced myself I was the only one who could win this race. Basically, all that pressure was really starting to get to me. If I was actually racing him out there now, I'd be screwed. So Takami was the obvious choice. That is part of it, yeah. But there was a little more to it, actually. To put it simply, how fast you are depends on how experienced you are. A professional racer is under constant, and I mean constant, pressure to tighten up his lap times. Street racing's a whole other ball of wax. Compared to the professional circuit, you guys are on an endless vacation. Tomoyuki is dealing with things right now you can't even imagine. The whole point of Project D is to help me develop my theory on being the fastest driver, so... Like any good scientific study, there's a control group and an experimental one. That's why we have two drivers. If there is such a thing as a natural aptitude for driving, and I'm not sure that there is, all it really means is that someone who's got it will improve at a faster pace than someone who doesn't. In the end, talent can't hold a candle to practice and self-discipline. It's not about how good you are. What it's about is how you got as good as you are. 
because of your different backgrounds, one of you brings to bear a more orthodox, circuit-derived approach to racing. While the other comes from the street. Kind of noble savage, so to speak. Someone whose technique represents a hodgepodge of different styles and whose only goal is to be the fastest driver on the street. Do you get what I mean, Keisuke? Our opponent tonight is an orthodox racer, and an incredible one at that. So it's not really a question of Takami being any better or worse than you are. Is this starting to sink in yet? Winning a race is a matter of experience. That's the reason you two lost to Project D, and why Tomoyuki won't let that happen to him. In this case, the difference between winning and losing is a question of driving style. I get it now. So then you did put a lot of thought into this decision after all. But why didn't you just tell us that from the beginning? I mean, we could have avoided all this confusion, you know? I am sorry about that. But I think you'll find that most of the confusion belongs to our opponents. Look out, here they come. Straight for the four snake hairpins. just got passed on the first hairpin. It's the vanishing line. Huh? Vanishing line? If you can find it, you're pretty much invisible to the guy in front of you. From where we're standing, it just looks like he took the inside. But what he did was actually a very skilled move. It's used in circuit races all the time. You essentially use your opponent's blind spot to cut across and slip into his line. Sounds simple, but it's not. I hear when it's time just right, even a seasoned professional can't avoid being dusted by someone who uses that move. This dude is something else. The four hairpins on this course are wide enough that an experienced driver can choose from several different lines when executing the move. When you get down to it, this course has a lot of features in common with a circuit track meaning someone like Tomoyuki is gonna feel right at home here. Damn, this guy is flying. Anybody home? Back here, Masashi. So, about that chat we had earlier. Do you have a specific preference as to the year? As long as it doesn't have wings or some flashy paint job, I really couldn't care less about the year. Yeah, you say that now. Anyway, I got this fella I do business with, told me he'd let me know if he found one, so... Hmm. You'll see for yourself once you've driven one, though. A four-wheel drive doesn't really suit you. We'll reach the maximum speed for this course right before the bridge coming up. The section after it's a steep uphill climb, so I'd better pull away now. It's time for me to finish this. He wasn't half bad for an amateur. Once we've crossed the bridge, we'll reach the uphill part. If this baby can't pick up the pace, I'm done for. Come on, 8-6. Show me what you got. actually keeping up with me. 
I'll be damned. We were expecting to race the FD, so we set up the gears to perform best on a high-speed straightaway, where the FD would have had the most leverage. Looks like that oversight's catching up with me. My shifts aren't sinking up worth a damn on these low-speed uphill corners. If my opponent had been a turbo, this wouldn't be an issue. Did they pull that 8-6 out of their ass or what? The brains behind this outfit must really know what he's doing. It wasn't all that apparent on the downhill, but on the uphill, the fact is staring me in the face. The 8-6 has better shifting points for its gears, pure and simple. On the corners, I have to take in second gear. He's still at first. Something else I've noticed. The 8-6's game has definitely stepped up since I passed it back there on the hairpin. My opponent's more focused now. seeing myself in the rearview mirror. I this rate he'll never give me enough space to pass him. What the hell am I gonna do? My only chance is to disappear. I've gotta find a way to get out of his field of vision like he did to me before. I've gotta try. not the sound of my engine. Where are you? Forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> nice one. That's your little spin on the vanishing line trick I pulled earlier, I take it. First time a car I've already overtaken on a mountain pass has ever gotten out in front of me again. I think I'm finally beginning to understand what the Chief is trying to show me with this race. And I am through holding back. Here they come. Is the H6 out in the lead? I'll make my move on the fourth snake hairpin. Don't take what I'm about to do personally, kid. On the circuit, you do what you gotta do to win. There, see? I didn't bump you hard enough to make you spin out. Just enough to throw off your rhythm for a second. Like I said, nothing personal. Tactics like that are a professional's bread and butter. <laughs> Ryosuke, sorry, but I have to know. Exactly what kind of advice did you give Takami when you took him around the course in the FC? I didn't give him any advice. What? I just showed him the course. I mean, we discussed the strategy I'd come up with by driving it myself, sure. But more importantly, we discussed how his instincts differ from mine. What he'd do on a course like this. But you did have a strategy, right? And he's basically running the course according to it? That's why you came here so early the other day, isn't it? To think it through with him in mind. The finish line isn't far off. If he pulls away from me now, there's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to catch up. Oh, come on, that again? That trick will only work once on me. No! The is right on his tail! I see that? The 8-6 is driving with his headlights off! 
Huh? He's driving with his lights off? You can't be serious. Man, he's really keeping up with me. I can't see him in my mirrors, but I know he's there. You've got to be kidding me. How can this Joker maneuver through a mountain pass in total darkness? He's crazy! Don't look at his taillights. Look at the road in front of him. All you need to see is right there. I've got to burn that image into my head and focus on following the line Ryosuke showed me. It's the only way I'll win this thing. Anyone who'll go this far earns my respect. You're one hell of a driver, kid, but we're in the final section now. And the road is too narrow for you to pass me. This race is mine. I hear he thinks he's tailing him with his headlights off. Lights off. He's gonna wreck or something. Outstanding. I haven't taught him that much. Takami came up with that on his own. Exactly the kind of magic I was counting on. Your one-of-a-kind talent for adapting when pushed to the edge. The finish line is up ahead. It may have been messy, but it's still a win. I won't give up. If there's an opening, I'm taking it. So, uh, why did you swerve out of your line back there? Hmm? Huh? You know, right before that last corner. Ah, uh, back there you mean. That was just good old-fashioned bad luck. Some animal crossed the road and startled me. Huh? I instinctively dodged. Hey, that's just the way it goes sometimes, right? Of course, the uphill part right before the finish line didn't help. I see what you're saying, but... Yeah, well, I guess some guys get all the luck, huh? Well... I... The race is yours, kid. I don't know if there's such thing as a goddess of victory or whatever. But if there is, it's pretty easy to see there's something about you that definitely strikes the old girl's fancy. And I lost tonight. I can't thank you enough, Toto. I think I finally get what you're trying to tell me with all this, and you're right. Is that so? However big or important I feel as part of the professional world, where I came from should always be a place I can go back to. When I'm lost or I get confused, all I have to do is follow my roots until I get back home. I can't tell you how rejuvenated I feel right now. I know. 